Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to another Diablo 4 quarterly update. This one's for October and I'm about two weeks behind schedule on this one. Came out October 7th. We are the 29th day, two, three weeks. And this one is mostly about the sound design of Diablo 4. We're going to talk about that. But before I start, um, there was some news a couple of weeks ago that Diablo 4 director or somebody in charge of the game or something very important with the game got replaced by the guy who did Diablo 3. Okay, let's uh, hopefully it turns out good. Let's let's hope so. Let's what they have to say for us this time. Hello and welcome once again to a new Diablo 4 quarterly update. I'm Joe Shelley from the Diablo 4 team. As a design lead who has been working on this dark shared open world action role playing game from the beginning, I'm honored to continue the vision of Diablo 4 as its new game director. Oh, there we go. Oh, so it even says it right here. Okay, so apparently this guy has been working on Diablo 3 as well, unless I got my information wrong. Okay, so it's the game director. Okay, there we go. Alright, we're learning something. And I'm humbled to represent a team pouring their hearts to this game. Like many of you, our team has been reflecting upon recent events. A lot has happened since our last blog and the hard work of practicing the values we aspire to must continue. It's parallel with the important work development of Diablo 4 continues too. And like obviously as you know right now, Blizzard is like this huge sexual harassment lawsuit happening right now which is like... You, you freaking idiots. I mean like, oh my god, these dumbasses. Like really like, that's, that's when you do like stupid shit at work like you shouldn't be doing anywhere really unless in the privacy of your own home um but yeah there you go there's our new diablo 4 game director so apparently this guy worked in diablo 3 for diablo 3 he was the diablo 3 game director or something which again damn it i hope it works out and i want to point something out um this i really enjoy this i really believe in this the team pouring their hearts into this game I really do believe the team that they currently have, from what we've seen so far, you know, with the design of the game, like they really, really are putting their hearts into this game. What worries me, as always, is the corporate decisions. It's not the designers who make this game, it's the corporate decisions, perhaps monetizing the game, perhaps making it too um, too shallow and whatnot, you know? The whole, even like, even sometimes, even some parts of game design, really, but I'm sure that each department really are dedicated to this game. Anyways, moving on. Over the past few years, we've assembled a strong team with an incredible passion for Diablo 4. You, Diablo fans, are a critical part of this team. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure we are. Uh, with the help of our valuable feedback, of your valuable feedback, we have steadily refined and deepened the game experience. We have ways to go, and although much has to ch much, much has changed, our commitment to the game is unwavering. So again, when, when like a you know a game design uh, game designer tells us this, or like a game studio tells us that we're a part of the team. And we'll listen to your valuable feedback. A lot of times, very important feedback is not taken into account. A lot of times, it's ignored. And a lot of times, there's some really stupid feedback that they manage to put into the game, or uh, people just suggesting really stupid things. So, really, I don't know how important feedback really is when it comes to a vision for a game. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. You really gotta choose the right proper feedback and I hope they're doing that. Sanctuary should always be items glittering in dark dungeons. Tales of powerful heroes standing against the onslaught of hell. Lands where trials, treasure and terrible monsters lie around every corner. Equal parts familiar and boundless in its possibilities. True. Doing this world uh, justice is a solemn responsibility. Today we're taking a deep dive into the sound design of Diablo 4. I do enjoy sound design. Sound is a sometimes underappreciated yet integral element of the game's design, serving as a chance for communicating everything from incoming damage to confirmation that a button press was registered by the game to the intensity of a combat sequence. Try turning off the sound in a Diablo game sometimes, you'll find your eyes uh, have to work a lot harder to follow the action. Not only that, but there's a lot of like sound effects, because it depends, you know, we're talking about sound effects, we're talking about music. Music, just by itself, Diablo 2, for example, if you listen to the soundtrack, it's just out of this world. Uh, but when it comes to sound effects, even like, even if you haven't played the game in like forever, but you hear like the sound effect of a of a spell or a or a action or something, like instantly brings you back to what it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm having like in my head currently, I'm having the um, Diablo 2 Necromancer Bone Armor sound effect. It's like it's a particular sound. You only hear it there. I haven't heard it in years, but I will never forget it. Just because. You know, it's it's cool sound design, right? It's it sticks with you, right? If it's done well. 
Sound also conveys the subtext of the world through which you adventure. Through which you adventure, it supports the rising and falling action of the campaigns and immerses you into the ambient life of a region, transporting you into the game world. While you're reading through the blog, I encourage you to listen to the ambient tracks and pay attention to their effects on your heart rate and emotions. Try closing your eyes while listening to get a better sense of how much is being communicated. Uh, crafting Diablo sound requires science, art, and the occasional ball of fire. Sound supervisor Chris Jampa and his team have fascinating insights to share in this behind the scenes look at how it all works. We hope you enjoyed this update and look forward to your thoughts and reactions. As promised, our next blog will cover endgame systems. Ooh, that's important. This, this I want to see. Endgame systems. This is what's going to make and break the game. Everything they, they worked until now, everything they told us until this moment, Will not matter if this doesn't work out. Absolutely. If you're only going to play the game for like a week and then you uninstalled, then this is going to be useless. And visual effects. Yeah, visual effects is cool. It's been a while since we lo looked at systems and there's a lot we're excited to share. Let us know what topics you'd like to hear about in the future too. We're grateful to have you with us in our on this journey. Thank you for playing the stuff we make. Joe Shelby, Game Director Diablo 4. Joe, better not disappoint us, man. Holy crap. I hope you can do a good job um, where, you know, the previous Game Director left off. Um, so what I want to say here also, it says ambient tracks and effects and whatever, all this stuff. I always find, for example, in Diablo 3, when you start the game and you have like one or two skills, well, you only have one skill when you start the game, your basic attack. But once you get like, let's say like one or two skills and you start moving around the world and you're fighting like one or two, three monsters at the same time, it's mostly zombies, it's slow enemies. There you can really pay attention to the sound design and even like the graphics and whatnot. I feel those moments to be so, so immersive. They're so good, right? But then you get to like end game and you're killing like a billion enemies with one shot. Well, so you're like running to the stage, killing like hundreds of enemies nonstop every every couple of seconds. Forget sound effects, forget like visual details, forget everything, man. You're not even paying attention anymore. And it's not just in, in, I'm not just listing Diablo for this, even like, you know, Path of Exile, everything else, every, these types of games, basically, um, that are very, like, packed towards the end game. You really enjoy the game when you start because you don't have anything besides your basic attack and, like, very slow enemies coming at you. And then you really see the action, you really see the animations, you really hear the sounds, you know? And after that, it just kind of, like, it just scrambles into a mess of, like, sounds and visual effects. And when you can't see shit no more, you can't hear shit no more. And you just kind of, like, go with it, you know? But that's 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 common in all these types of uh, ARPGs. Uh, the sound design of Diablo 4. Hello, Traveler. <laughs> Hello, Traveler. Okay, uh, Kane. <laughs> I'm Chris Jampa, sound director for Diablo 4. Kane see that, no? In Diablo 2, Hello, Traveler? I don't know. Maybe I'm getting my shit wrong. I don't know. The sound team has been steadily cranking away on the soundscape. By the way, I was going to say thank you, Gandalf, but <laughs> Gandalf never said that. What the hell? The sound team has been steadily cranking away on the soundscape for a while now. And while we aren't ready to go in depth about the music side of Diablo 4 quite yet. Okay, so no music. Okay. We wanted to start to give you some insight on some of the audio processes, content, and motivations behind the sound of the game. Before we begin, I want to give you something to listen while you're reading this quarterly update. Please enjoy the snowy, dark and stormy ambience of fractured peaks below as you start your journey. You know what? Perfect. We got us some music. There you go. Let's, let's read the... Gold. Campfire. It looks good. Sounds great. It sounds great. It sounds great. So let's leave it there. As I continue reading this interesting story, you know. Um, some of the music. You also got a creaking uh, lantern there. The squeaky lantern. Ooh, very nice. Okay, let's leave in the background. No, uh, this will be good. The sound and music in games are the invisible glue that supports the storytelling and ties you to your character and their actions during gameplay. By the way, this was a very good idea for them to play this year. Uh, creating, sound for, uh, creating sound for games is an exciting artistic endeavor that you can see only here. However, you can feel it literally with the sound waves against your body depending on what you're listening back on. It's an amazing medium that can, all, all, that can also affect how you feel emotionally while playing the game. 
and that's that's very true right oftentimes music um you know sound effects they actually do add a lot to like the ambience around right i mean try watching like a horror movie without any like music without any creepy music or something you're like you're bored out of your mind it's like okay like the guy's gonna jump in a second now there's no build up in sound you just the guy just shows up like oh okay there he is with the monster or whatever right a lot of times it's subtle and other times it's over the top, but always there to support the moment to moment gameplay. We hope you enjoyed this dive into various aspects of the game's soundscape. And you have plenty more to look forward to and experience while you finally get to play it. Naturally, we want anyone and everyone who might be hearing it impaired hearing impaired to enjoy the experience of the album core as well. So we are taking measures to broaden the experience to be inclusive for people who without with hearing or visual disabilities. There are various accessibility features underway that we hope to talk about in the future. Really? For somebody that's hearing impaired, how would you do that? Unless you don't mean like all the way, but maybe like they can discern some sounds. That's cool, sure. Good work. Um, same thing for visually impaired, you know, maybe like some descriptive video or something, I'm guessing, you know. The devil is in the details. For the Devil 4 soundscape, we've continued the tradition of gratifying, gratifying combat, expanding upon the ambience of support and uh, the epic open world. Continued to embrace the darkness and tone and gore while also trying to deliver a cleaner yet punchy audio mix. That's adapting to the situations as you play. Again, if you want to, if you want to hear like an amazing dark um, soundtrack, just go on YouTube, type Diablo 2, um, OST, original soundtrack, and just listen to that. Listen to that, but not just your basic, because I know everybody thinks about like you know the um, Tristram song with the guitar. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something like the uh, the Crips or something like that. Like it sounds freaking dark and evil, man. It sounds really really dark and evil it sounds really good too if they can get something like that in this game i'm sold on the sound design one of the biggest goals uh we try to focus on as, as a sound designers is to make the highest quality sounds to be triggered back in the game real time and make them seem believable as well as grounded within the game world tied to what you're experiencing okay the randomness of audio playback is of the utmost importance when it comes to gameplay if you think about real life, nothing is ever heard the exact same way twice due to your listening environments and the positioning of the sound source. And that is pretty damn true, especially when it comes to something like a game where you might be more like fighting in melee range, like you know metal, and you know you're you're hitting metal against like maybe like leather, armor, rock, whatever, right? So you're probably gonna have like different sounds, and it is true because usually in games like you you have like a sword hit, it is the same sound for like everything else. You know what I'm saying it's like a shh. Or a swing, whatever, like swing. <laughs> that movie there, I forgot the name. So it's like a sh or whatever, but it's just like the sh, sh, sh. It's like no other sound, but if they could actually like modify that and make maybe make like, I don't know, 10, 20 different sounds of a sword hitting like metal and you play like a random sign, a sound every single time, that could be very interesting. I never thought about that. That could be pretty cool. It's much more different when you have like a modern game with like guns because you know guns always make the same sound right because it's true you know the same bullets and whatnot so maybe that's not so much possible but something that's you know magic and melee uh, melee combat most of the time could probably work even fireballs could cast a different sounds you know for different casts sounds never play back at the same exact sound pressure level along with the reflections within your environment and everything else happening around you at that moment in time in essence, there are always subtle, subtle real-life reasons as to why nothing ever sounds exactly the same. So as sound designers for video games, we always strive to introduce subtle, randomized variations to not only the sound design itself, but also for when you hear it in-game. This is an awesome idea. I really enjoy this. Again, if you can randomize the different sword hits on a plate mail, you put like 20 different uh, sound effects for that. And like, you know, they're, they're all the same, but they're a bit different. That would be freaking awesome. That would like really add some um, some detail, right? When we are doing our job correctly, it's something you tend to not notice and supports your immersion into the game world by backing up the incredible visuals, story, and end-to-end -end experience. Another huge goal we have when creating audio for Devil 4 is to fill in sounds for just about everything that's occurring on your screen. Whether it's the world's world ambience, monsters idling off screen, the tiny chunks of wood that are colliding off a wall when you break an object, that's nice, that's attention to detail, everything should make a sound. We pour countless hours of effort into covering almost everything you see and don't see while also keeping it subtle enough to not be distracting and just feel right. The devil certainly looks, certainly lurks within the details through that. However, just because we are filling uh, in as much sound as we can, it doesn't mean you need to hear it every time. 
the playback engine and all, that's also very true um you know i just give you an example of music and horror movies before you know how like it builds up and you know it kind of like you're waiting for that that scene where like the monster jumps out you know and the music is at its highest but also some of the best scarier movies scariest movies have no sound when when something scary is about to happen or something it's just no sound and that's just equally as important it's important to have sound it's equal as equally as important not to have sound in the proper moments they can really like if you can manage to mix both perfectly i mean you're getting like the best experience out there you know what i'm saying um so i agree with this i agree with this like not having sound is just as important um or like you don't need to hear all the time absolutely you need like some pauses because otherwise you just get like tired of it of listening to it the playback engine within the game will not trigger too many instances of a sound if they are trying to play at the same time based on a strict settings or create as basic rules okay so basically certain sounds have priority over others that makes sense that basically means that you know you won't be like too overloaded with like 50 billion sounds ringing at the same time because of the isometric camera view and being able to see so much on the screen at once, we must limit how many instances of each sound would play back at any given moment. Gotcha. Once dialed in correctly, you tend not to notice that some instances were never triggered, and that helps with the clarity of the audio mix. It's a fine line we struggle during big moments with a lot going on screen. I'm also guessing, I'm also guessing, um, to go back here, right, let's say, let's say you are, your character is here, and is like, next to the fire probably gonna hear the fire but you probably won't listen won't hear something that's playing over here something that's playing over here just gonna like listen or hear in your surroundings like in a circle and i'm guessing the further away you go from the circle the lower the sound will be so eventually like everything that's around here you won't hear it or here or here or here you won't hear what's going on you're just gonna hear like what's going on around your character it's good to have this video i can like show out show off what i, what I mean you know uh, how about we go on to more of the creative side of the sound design? Naturally, there is no Diablo game without the heroes who do your bidding to vanquish the various evils that lie in your path. Let's talk about some of the fire-based sorcerer skills that partially define the class. Um, and like I said in my previous video, I still haven't found my class for Diablo 4. I, I need a dark class. I Hopefully this is going to be introduced soon. I was thinking maybe they're going to introduce the new class at BlizzCon, but apparently it's cancelled for this year, or next year, whenever it is. I think it's next year. And... Yeah, so that's not going to happen then, so we don't know if they're going to announce it soon, I hope. Uh, so, Hero Fire Skills. The sound crew luckily gets to recall all kinds of neat and unique sounds for the game, so that we may have plenty of sound sources to edit from when it comes time to start uh, sound design. Sound design is a technically described as taking a recorded audio source, editing it, and processing it to be used in another medium. In the case of sound design for games, we'll record raw audio, reprocess them, and edit it out for gameplay for our gameplay needs in various ways to achieve something that sounds clean, usable, and replayable for gameplay. The sound could be exactly what it was originally meant for, or end up sounding completely different and used for something else entirely. This sounds like techno music pretty much. You record the sound, uh, I don't know, your phone or something against the table, it makes a sound, you take it, you can play like that, you can modify it, you can add as much reverb, delay, whatever you want to it, you can completely uh, change the wave pattern of the sound so it sounds completely different. You can modify any sound so much that like they say here, they can pretty much do anything they want with it, which is pretty cool. Uh, something we always tend to need for a game like Diablo is of course fire. When time permits, and we're, we can hear the fire right now. When time permits, we plan for some time to record sounds out in the field. For Diablo 4, one of the first big recordings we did as a team was the Desert Fire sessions before the lockdown for COVID-19. Okay guys, like, you don't have to mention it. Before the lockdown, guys, we did this right, we did it before the lockdown. If you wear proper protection, you can do it. If you all wear masks, you can even do it now, like, relax. We traveled far from Blizzard HQ to record various types of fire sounds in the deserts of California. This, this... This sounds like a travel expense. Yo, listen, we got like 10 Gs to burn. What should we do? Uh, I don't know. Send a bunch of guys in the desert. Or like, we're going to take a vacation in the desert. For what? Uh, we'll record sounds. Well, that's a good idea. That's that's a perfect excuse. Let's go on vacation, you know what I'm saying? And they just go out there and like they chill for like two months and like they record for like 10 minutes, you know? Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I wasn't there. Armed with multiple recording rigs and microphones. Uh, how should I put it? Like, this, this is what I enjoy, right? When it comes to like to like this gaming design or like movies and whatever it's i get it 
and I don't get it. I get it because, like, obviously you want the best sound, and the best sound you're gonna get it from like the best place, which is out there. You want like, you want like, for example, I want to make, I want to like, I want, I want this campfire to sound like it's in the desert. So you go in the desert, you build a campfire, you record it in the desert, and then you're like, I want this campfire to sound like it's in the middle of a blizzard. So you get it like, you go, you travel God knows where up north. You get into a blizzard, you build a campfire, and you record that sound. And if you put one next to each other, there's a difference, right? But like, who, like, realistically, who in the fuck is gonna hear the difference when you're slaying like tens of thousands of monsters next to a campfire in Diablo 4, you know what I'm saying? Like, the detail is great, but man, you gotta pay attention to hear it. Like, you really gotta pay attention to hear it. Now, depending how much money they invested into this, then you gotta ask yourself, was it worth it? You know what I'm saying? Could I have actually just done a campfire like in a studio and you don't have to travel all the way to like deserts of California, you know what I'm saying? To get yourself a campfire. But again, I digress. Maybe we will really hear the difference in game. Maybe this wasn't just, you know, uh, vacation and they decided to like record something in the meantime. I don't know. Thankfully, since it was winter time, it wasn't too hot during the day and just a bit cold at night. Well, our main goal was to capture fire, we ended up capturing all kinds of other sounds we have used during production, like ambience, rocks, impact, foliage movements, wood impacts, door slams, wooden cabin creaks, mellow impacts, and scrapes. That is true, you could probably do more than just record like, a campfire in the desert, you could probably do a lot, much more um, sound effects. So again, it's just like, you're going so out of your way for something so, um, so minimal. And I hope the game is good, because otherwise the game sucks, like all that was done for nothing. People are not even going to play your game, you know? Anyways, Blizzard has money, they got billions of dollars, they don't care. Sorcerer Skills, Firebolt and Inferno. Some of the fire recordings were then used specifically for the Sorcerer Skills, Firebolt and Inferno. For the skill Firebolt, we recorded sets of wispy and smoldering flames bushes, using a fire staff or a dried out medium sized log of wood and performed the sound in various ways around sets of microphones. When we had a nice, once we had a nice assortment of different types of fire sounds, we then edited and processed those fire wishes into game-ready one-shot audio files for the casting and impact sounds, as well as other loops for the projectile traveling through the air. It all comes together as one cohesive sounding experience once you get it hooked up in the game to play back as the entire skill sounds effect set for Fireball. Seems like they went to a lot of trouble. Sounds good. For the Inferno Sorcerer skill, we then used other takes of the fire recordings and processed them to sound more aggressive and powerful for the larger skill. Just like Fireball, there's a set of casting one-shot sounds, a set of loops, and another set of one-shots for when the snake form constricts in its body. Is Inferno Hydra? I don't remember. The snake form, that's Hydra, right? So I guess that's Inferno, it's called Inferno now. I know we saw Hydra in the previous videos, but I don't remember. I guess it was called Inferno. One cool thing about the Inferno skill is that while it's fire, it's fire that has taken the form of a snake. Because of this form, we are able to take some liberties on pushing it away from just fire sound design. We added some light snake rattling S effects paired with a darker toned ethereal end to the skill sound to make it feel a bit more magical. When all these pieces re trigger in game, it will always sound like the same skill but slightly different each time, which increases the repl repl replayability sound wise. This is cool, slightly different each time, I like that. This is what they got for us. Oh, it's a video. That valley, okay. to travel 500 miles to hit a rock on a piece of metal by the way <laughs> I'm joking but you know what I mean but I mean no it makes sense it's down in the desert so yeah <laughs> also I love the uh, <laughs> the sensory of the Nike logo <laughs> it's so obvious <laughs> It's good sound effects though, I like them. Slate this. Big plane. This is Poi Ball of Death. Thank you. Thank you.
take four or five uh, with the fire or staff. Five. All four wicks are on fire. It's a big one. It's a big one. Sounds good. I'm guessing. I'm guessing this is post um, special effects, right, and um, mastering because it does sound. Um, Outworldly, let's say. It does sound fantastic in nature. Maybe not, I don't know. Oh, we do get some coming. Whoa, what the hell? This is like another video. Wait, is it? Oh, it's the same thing. Yeah, I can't read numbers. Okay, so Inferno is not Hydra. My bad. Almost like looks like some sort of a cyclone. I just want to hear the um, the sound effects. Do they really sound different? Light, which is great, which is really great, which is really great, which is really great. That's good. That's good. Just, just like a tiny, you know, a tiny touch here and there, so that it does sound a bit different, which is great. Uh, monster sound design. Diablo games wouldn't be fun if you didn't have monsters to slay. One of the most fun things about working on a Diablo game is the vast number of uh, and var variants of monsters that exist. This makes monsters ripe for both experimental and more traditional sound design. So let's dig into some monster sound design for folly and voice. Monster movements. The combination of expert animation and AI brings life and personality to the creatures as they undertake their nefarious activities. When we start the audio process for a brand new monster, I always recommend that the sound designers start by adding footsteps and folly, floating or scan to their movement animations. Okay. The movement, uh, the moment the creature has footsteps and folly, the creature's cadence and rhythm of their movement really comes to life. It's at this point I consider that they're becoming grounded and attached to this world. This also dictates how vocal they might sound based on their patterns of movement. It sounds complicated, but sounds good. Monster voice. The next layer that finishes the birthing of the creature into existence is their voice exertions. These are the grunting or yelling sounds of them exerting as the player as they attack, or the screams of pain as you take them out one by one. Each monster fi family can be quite different from the next, depending on the types of monsters, the type of monster. We might have intense sound design layers of animalistic type sounds, or even everyday objects that, will, that we will manipulate to sound like a screech or a scream to create a layer within that final voice. Like I said before, you know, with editing, you can do whatever you want with sounds. And it's really this speak about monster families before, it's basically the same type of monsters, uh, the same designs of monsters, like, you know, different shapes and sizes and whatnot. Other times can be simpler. As we'll hire creature voice actors to help create the core tone of the monster's voice that we can help that we can then build around with other sounds. Hire creature voice actors. Imagine that having that on your CD. <laughs> so what's your previous experience? I used to do like creature voices. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. I'm sure this is probably massive in the industry for like voice actors, you know? Um, in the case of the wood raid, it's almost fully sound designed from wood creaks and strains processed to extreme lengths and choosing the right sounds to convey emotion. The wood raid has a blast of sound design as it's mostly freaky and creaky wood, wood sounds with a touch of very low pitched human tone under your roll. Let's hear it up. It is creaky. Sounds like almost like sounds like a wooden ship or something. This part. Nice. Sounds heavy. Light. Wow, that was pretty nice. The whole thing. Nice. Very cool. 
Looks cool. Another monster we had the pleasure of working on is this disgust disgustingly awesome fly host. Oh boy, I, I I already hate it. I didn't see what it's like. I didn't I didn't I didn't see it. I didn't hear it. I already hate it. Fly host. This beast walks around birthing flies. I freaking know. To attack the players. We ended up using some of our early gore sessions recording where we ripped and smacked cabbages and melons and stirred and squished mayonnaise, salsa and a delicious seven layer dip. That is pretty delicious. If you never had a seven layer dip you should definitely should. Uh, Costco sells a pretty good one. Um, sells an alright one. Other people. It's alright. But it's pretty good. Into a not so great smelling slurry to make some great slimy and disgusting sounds to use in our sound design. Like I said, I already hate it. I don't know what the hell it is, but I hate it. Two thousand eighteen. Wow, that's three years ago. I'm guessing this is for a previous or whatever. Maybe not. This probably Diablo, Diablo Four. So nasty. Why did this guy cover up his nose? Look at this guy. What a smell or what? Look at him. <laughs> Grapes. Interesting. So that's how you do it. Canned tomatoes, yeah. <laughs> right. Nice. You know what? This seems like a pretty cool job. I never thought about this. This is pretty damn nice. I've seen how they do sounds before, like from movies and stuff, but just seeing it like this sounds it looks pretty cool. Apple in a melon. I hit it already. Well, that's nice, nasty. That's on par for Diablo. Moving on to open world ambience. One of the audio pillars for Diablo 4 is living audio. What this means is that the soundscape, which you're listening to right now, is ever evolving and ever static. This pillar is built deep into the sound design variations we create for all types of uh, sound type for all type sounds, including when it plays back real time in the game, especially the ambience. Because of the importance of the massive open world, we wanted to give the ambience as much detail as possible and thinking of it on the same level of hero sound design. Really, okay. So same level as the heroes, if you got it. Having the audio and the systems changing subtly over time is key to this pillar. We always want the subtle changes in ambience that might not be very no noticeable, less repeatable and feel more natural and immersive overall. You guys remember in uh, Diablo 2 when you got to the desert and like the landscape change and the sound design change and the, the, the world sound change and it was like you could like feel the heat you know what I'm saying it was like really like oh my god what a what a huge difference, you know, from from the pre previous map, right? It was like all like green and rainy. Now you just got to like this place where it's like all like dry and hot and whatnot. It was really like a huge difference, and I think the sound design played huge in that. So I agree with this 100%. The world building team has done an amazing job, giving us huge amounts of inspiration and in filling out the regions visually, so that we can follow it up with immersive ambient audio. Since the player might be in the open world for a large amount of time, we wanted to support each exterior region with unique sounding environments that also include subtle changes to the audio mix over time. To help achieve this, we used audio systems like real-time occlusion, high-quality reverbs, and environment reactive delay and echoes. I told you guys about delay before, I told you guys about reverb before, it's, it's all part of the music industry. And the sound industry, obviously. We have provided some long-form recordings of in-game footage with a static shot where you can hear the ambience change over time. Not only does this show some cool ambient sound design, we also wanted to provide uh, these to you for your tabletop RPG sections. That's pretty cool. Or even just to sit back and get lost in while working. The clips were recording around 5-6 minutes and looked to be almost one hour. So let's stop our previous winter environment. And let's listen to some dry steps.
It's true, this is good for like uh, studying or working or something. You just put this in the background. Even sleeping is good. This is good for sleep. Here are the birds, here are the crows. Again, compared to before, it's dry, you know? It's way dry. It's like it's like a hot summer day, you know? You just like take a break in like some bushes, you know? If you're like out there like uh, walking or something, I don't know. Exploring, I don't know. Here are the bugs. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, next we got the Cos Glen Coast. Let's see what's up. I'm guessing water? Yeah. Uh, the water effects are a bit weird. Moving a bit too fast. Um, what was it? Uh, Path of Exile, when they reworked their water effects, they did a really good job, I find. Uh, if you want to see some really cool water effects, check out Path of Exile. Um, this feels a bit like too much of a mass. Feels like this is just one entity, all the water. Like, it's not really. You see, like, the, the little waves here, the wave patterns? The, the, this is not really moving, it's just like. Just stuck. I don't know. It feels like it's just like a mass of jello, just like moving up and down, which I find very strange. I was expecting to have like better water effects. Who knows? Maybe this is just like a work in progress. I'll pre alpha. Okay. Sounds? You got the water, you got like a seagull in the background. We heard it once. A bit of wind, rain. I can take a nap with this. Again, you want to sleep, put this in the background, man, you're gone. It sounds so good. More seagulls. It sounds really cool. It sounds really cool. And then we have Scott's Glen Rain. Let's hear it. Mm. Nice. I love the world also, looks really good. The graphics look really good. Looks look they look modern, you know, just like the um the the um a light reflection in the water looks really sick. Got some birds. Rain of course. Oh you can sleep on this. Holy shit. Some bugs or birds. This is relaxing. This is good. This is great. I'm gonna leave this on. As I keep reading. <clears throat> uh, dungeon ambience. When it comes to Diablo dungeon crawling style ambience, we take a special delight in creating various and unique sounding ex experiences to heighten your immersion. Our approach to the dungeon ambience is a bit less intensive compared to the new open world as we don't want to distract you away from a key part of what makes the Diablo game fun, dungeon crawling. This is one area where we can take more liberties in uh, diving deeply into the hellish and creepy soundscapes while having the monsters on screen to accompany the audible experience. For Diablo 4, we are taking a more realistic approach to what you hear is what you get, even within a dungeon. With long reverberation and sound occlusion, we want you to pay close attention to what might be just around the corner, mentally preparing you for the next pack of enemies, so if you hear something, if you hear an enemy, there's a good possibility that that enemy is present like on the next screen or two screens away. So you can get ready for it, I guess. Breakable interactives. Oh yeah, big time barrels, the whatever, right? The, the boxes and whatnot. Those always make like a cool sound. Scattered around the dungeons are a plethora of gratifyingly great breakables. That's always very good. And I think Diablo 3 also had a bit more breakable stuff in dungeons, which is really cool. Um, you can like really destroy like a lot of stuff, which is pretty awesome. Felt good. The interactives, and sounded good, interactives uh, team have been creating hundreds of amazingly detailed breakable objects in Diablo 4. 
For the amazing amount of detail they put into the objects as they break, we in turn wanted to fill in every silver and chunk of destruction you see with believable physics audio. Destroying objects in Diablo should sound just as gratifying and believable as taking down monsters. We put a lot of effort into making sure that all objects have an extremely gratifying break sound while supporting the debris within, uh, with tiny bits of audio to accompany the pieces that break apart then fly and fly across the room. I'm still amazed at the level of detail left for the breakables in Diablo 4. One of my favorite things to do is when you see a room full of them is to have Adam. That's what we got. They should sound good. Nice metallic sound. I love the woods. looks really good. Cool. Like the muddy water and whatnot, that's pretty nice. Nice. Uh, it reminds me a bit of Diablo 3, I gotta admit, which uh, which is good because they did a really good job with the sound effects in that game, and uh, the levels are pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, but you know, you still got that classic sounds like the gold dropping, the urns, the uh, crates, and whatnot. It's pretty cool. Um, last uh, last paragraph, uh, paragraphs, last uh, item on the list, let's say, game mix. And finally, I wanted to talk about a little about, a little about the isometric camera provide some interesting challenges when it comes to bringing all the elements of the game mixed together and you know sound mastering is going to be super important because if you have like something that's too loud or not loud enough you're going to lose all all effect of the sound right of course you probably all modify this in the settings but having like a good mastering of the sound is super important especially when it comes to music and i'm guessing games as well and movies because you can see battlefield as a because you can see battlefield well, because you can see the battlefield at a certain angle, out of a certain range, we have to make sure that the monsters ex exiting existing on the screen are covered with audio, but have the overall mix not feel too cluttered, not too empty, nor too empty. There's a lot of real-time juggling of sound playback based on priorities and importance to you, the player. Makes sense. For Diablo 4, we are able to drive the real-time audio mix more than ever before. Because of the isometric camera view, we must trigger sounds on just about everything you see, but focus your ears and the most important sounds you should be paying attention to. We've been carving away at, us, at audio mix states and an audio important system that will allow certain important monster sound to poke out when they are needed. So I'm guessing again, like I said before, I'm probably guessing like different sounds or different monsters that have like priority in sounds. So for example, if a monster yells but you destroy a crate, probably you're gonna hear the monster yell louder than the crate. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna like uh, prioritize which is more important, which this is what they're saying. Clarity of game audio mix is hard to achieve in a game where you can have multiple heroes as well as various amounts of monsters on screen. While having detailed ambiances means we need to craft different audible mix states depending on the situation. We hope and yeah, pretty much. Again, it's all about sound mastering and mixing. If they probably have like experts on this for sure, they do. So I'm sure they're gonna do an excellent job. But I like I said before, I really think you're gonna enjoy this more at the beginning of the game than like than the later stages of the game because at the beginning of the game your character is not doing much it doesn't have like 50 million spells so you really got to pay a lot more attention to the sounds than you pay the paying at end game and unfortunately like i said it's nothing nothing new just for diablo this is for all arpgs uh once you have like 50 million things on screen you probably like the sound is probably going to lose its value unfortunately but when the game starts and you know what you well we've seen these small videos 
where it's very empty, the rooms are very empty, and it's just you like one, two spells, and that's it. You're gonna hear the sound fully, and it's gonna sound really good, I'm sure of it. We hope you have enjoyed this brief look into the sound design of Diablo 4. There's so much more to talk about, but alas, we'll have to save it for another time. We welcome any feedback you might have about anything I've heard in the videos or learned about in the Quarry's blog. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about the soundscape of Diablo 4. Chris Jampa sounds provides Diablo 4. Well, Chris, uh, what we heard so far sounds really good, man. Uh, I wish to congratulate you on this excellent job because it sounds really good. Um, sound sound design, it's super important. I know like a lot of people... You know, it's funny because when people talk about video games, you know, they talk about gameplay uh, first, then, you know, graphics. Even though everybody says, oh, graphics are not important, but like everybody talks about the graphics, but everybody says that they're not important, you know. Um, but very few people talk about the sound, and I find that the sound brings so much to a game, especially when done right. It's just, you know, that we don't really pay attention as much as the gameplay or the graphics. But uh, this is a super important job, and if done right, as we've seen it in this video, it sounds really damn good. And I do enjoy, you know, music and whatnot, so I do appreciate this kind of work. Um, I can't wait for next uh, the next uh, developer's vlog, quarterly update, sorry. Uh, end game that's that's gonna make or break the game everything we've read so far everything we've seen so far the next blog will make it or break it for me in my case um, I hope they have something something how should I put it something de really well developed for end game that's that's all I'm hoping really uh, I'm hoping you can have like a robust end game let's say you know it's not one of those the same I don't know, the same thing over and over again, like random, random, how should I put it, random numbers attached to it or whatever, or just like, you know, doing endgame just to get your, improve your gear by 1% or something. I hope it's not none of that. I hope it's something like important, something that's hard, something that's valuable, something that you really want to complete, you know? Um, we'll see. We'll see. I'll keep that for next time. Until then, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you.